Hi, I'm Sean Smith. This is Sean Smith Photos, where I edit street photography and occasional travel photos in On One Photo Raw. So today I'm going to go back to basics and we're going to look at the import dialog as well as culling uh, photos and hit up on a couple of hotkeys that will be useful to everyone. So let's get to it. All right, so uh, I went out for a photo walk yesterday. I got uh, about 180, 200 shots. Uh, most of them are not very good because uh, the light was flat and I don't know, it's just kind of an uninspiring street photo walk day, but we're gonna use those photos and we're going to import them into my catalog and then do some culling. And this should be a relatively quick video, but uh, let's, let's see what happens here. So uh, to import, you go to file, uh, go to file. Okay, so I think that the, there, that should fix that, right? No. My video recording software seems to be interfering with the top menu on On1. So when I'm not recording, the menu is flawless. Don't look at this as an issue with on one. It's an actually an issue with my recording software. So we'll go to file, import from device. And it sometimes it takes a little bit, but you'll get this pop up. And in here we can see all of the photos that are in your SD card. And I had already inserted my SD card into a card reader, which is attached to my uh, computer. And on the top bar here, we can check all, which is what is by default, uh, check none, and then, or individually check. So if I wanted to only import these shots, I would select these two shots here, maybe this one, maybe that one. But for me, when I'm importing, I import all because it's really not a fun process to uh, cull in this little dialogue and yes I can import or increase the thumbnail size down here at the bottom but I would much rather just import them all and then do the culling process live or and once it's already imported because I can see them uh, individually or in the film strip mode or you know I there's a little more flexibility so I'm going to import all of them and then over here, I have destination options. And so it's asking me what folder. And since the last time I imported, the it went into the November photo, uh, November folder. And, or I can look at this older one, or I can choose my catalog, or I can choose current browse location, or I can just choose a specific folder. So for me, I'm just going to stick with November, but if, say it was the, my first photo shoot of December, then I would just probably either navigate to the December folder and choose current browse location or, you know, pick it manually. So now November, you have further options. You could put it in a subfolder. So maybe you were shooting an event. It could be, you know, a wedding or a birthday party, or you, you went on a day trip to some some place near near your home, and you just like to name it by where you went. You could do that. Uh, you could put it in a secondary folder and then choose that. Uh, you can generate subfolders, and here you could put your so it would generate it by with these presets here by the year, month, and day. And this would be great if you've taken a lot of shots over multiple days, maybe you're on vacation and you like to organize it like that. For me, that's not how I like to organize it. So I don't use these options I disable them. Oh yeah, uh, sorry, going back to the subfolders. If you're choosing to put it into a subfolder, you have these default uh, preset options, but you can also add a token. So you can choose the file name or, you know, like the date, specific specific date format, uh, sequence numbers, metadata. 
So there's a lot of options in here. I just, I don't use them. They're not necessarily uh, the right thing for me. Then you have a uh, rename and rename, if we open this up, it gives us the same sort of uh, options as the generate subfolders did. So we could rename it with any of these uh, preloaded presets, or you can create your own preset whoops, using the same thing with uh, the tokens. So uh, I, I have a, a preset that I use for renaming, but I rename after I've called because I, I don't want to have huge gaps in my number. So I, my typical naming convention goes year dash month dash uh, sequence number. So it'd be like 2023 dash November dash 001 0002 003. Uh, and you know, I, I take a few hundred shots over the month, but I usually end up with somewhere between 50 and 60 after I've culled. So instead of just naming them each time I import is I go through and I call and once I'm done calling, I'll rename everything. And it, it may take me a few days before I get through all the calling, uh, but that's just how I work. How you work may be different. Now, the, the next tab here is add metadata and there are presets. Again, you can create your own preset and I have a preset that I use copyright 2023. So it includes my name, the copyright, uh, creator information, my website. Hey, go check it out. SeanSmith.net, Sean-Smith.net. And then I uh, copyright terms, all rights reserved. Now you can include a lot of other things in here. None of that is really interesting to me or useful to me, but it might be useful for you. Uh, feel free to add that. And that would add it every single time that you import if you create a preset or you could do it individually like occasionally like if i'm on a vacation i might come in here and type in one of my keywords is vacation and then vacation would be added to all of these photos but i don't do that often and in this case i'm not because it's just a regular street photo walk next we have photo settings. And here, if I turn this on, I have options to add any number of photo presets. So I've got my own presets that I've created. I've got a whole bunch of ones that came with on one or that I added from uh, the packs that you get being an on one member or an on one plus member. So I could add any of these presets to all of the photos that I'm importing. Now I don't typically do this, but I could see this being really useful if say you do professional photography and you're shooting in a studio or you shoot weddings and you pull it in and then you have certain settings that you by default use on almost every photo. So maybe it's some, some sharpening or pulling up the shadows or a white balance that you always adjust for. Then I would create a preset and add it on import. Saves you a little bit of time. For me, my shots are, sh uh, when I shoot, it's all kinds of different light, all kinds of different settings. It's just part of being a street photographer. So I don't use this, but definitely very useful for specific photographers. Next is edit capture date. And if I open this up and turn it on, I can set a specific uh, date and that's down here. So, you know, I guess it defaults to uh, 2000 January 1 at midnight. Uh, or I can adjust the time zone or I can set to the creation date. Adjust time zone. Uh, this is great. There is one flaw with this though. If you live in certain locations like Newfoundland uh, and I believe there's a, a, another country with a region in South America where they, their time zone is by half hour, you might not be able to adjust the time correctly. So just be aware of that. I, I think it would be nice if on one added a further option for time zones. Maybe it'd be a little checkbox like by the half hour or whatever. In, in any case, 
the capture date works for probably 98%, 97% of everybody. Now I don't need that, so I'm gonna turn that off. And then I'm going to import. And this will take a few minutes. And we can see uh, it's importing along at the bottom here. And while it's importing, I can start the culling process. So what I typically do is I will go into text and I will filter by DSCF, which is uh, the Fuji default naming uh, prefix on all their photos. Because when I import, I haven't renamed it. So if I filter to show only DSCF, then I'm not going to see all the shots that I've already edited or renamed, and I don't need to look at them. So DSCF, tab out, and now I'm only seeing the shots that I've recently imported. Uh, so if you do this, you'll want to uh, use whatever the prefix is for your camera's raw format or uh, naming convention. So let's start by editing or culling our photos. All right, so there's things that we can do here. Um, one option is you can, I always use keyboards, but you can auto advance as you name or rate. Now, I don't like auto advance for a couple of reasons. Uh, when I'm editing a photo, sometimes I will change the rating. So I'll be in the develop module, editing it and say, oh, well, instead of a one star, this is now a three star. And if you change the rating and you have auto advance turned on by default, guess what? You're not editing that photo anymore. You've rated it and you've moved on to the next one. So I don't really like that. Uh, but I can see some people would like that. And the easy way to turn on auto advance is to go to photo, auto advance, and you turn that on and I'm going to use the X key to reject photos. And if I hit X, you can see the X has been added here and I've automatically moved on to the next photo. Now, this also works if you're in the film strip view and to get to film strip, you type F. Okay, so here we are in film strip mode. I also don't like this shot and I'm looking at it and wondering why did I even take it? So X, auto advance, X, auto advance. All right, so here's this shot. I was walking to the subway station and uh, I saw this kid with balloons, but it's out of focus. X, X, X. So auto advance works great like that. Now, I don't really like the auto advance, so I'm gonna turn it off. And now I can use, I can advance myself manually by I'm at this shot, I don't like it, I hit X and then the right arrow key. Um, so I remember this, I was on the subway and I like the interaction between this couple, but I'm not so sure this is a great shot because like the focus is on the guy's crotch and nobody needs to look at that. So I'm gonna delete this, X, right key, X, right key. And here I am uh, outside the Eaton Center and I like the bright red jacket against that one. I uh, think I took a couple of shots of this guy. There we go, that's the keeper. All right, so I'm gonna go here, X, X, and this guy's got this bird that was riding his handlebars and decided to fly away. So I like this shot, it has a lot of potential. I'm gonna give it one star, and I, how do you rate a star is with the number key, one. So you can see down here, it's now a one, and I could do two, three, four, five. If you wanna remove your stars, you use the tilde, or sorry, the back tick. And the back tick is next to the number one key. It's the left of it. So one, two, three, four, five, back tick. If you want to rate colors, and I use this occasionally if I want to uh, filter the shots that I'm gonna show when I'm recording, or maybe I'm trying to figure out what I wanna print or share with somebody. Uh, color shares 
are using the six, seven, eight, nine, and zero keys. So watch the little square here. Six, seven, eight, nine, zero. And you can access that by clicking on it and you get a little drop down which shows you the colors and then there's none. Now, there's no hotkey listed next to the none, but there is a hotkey combination that exists if you check uh, the documentation. Control, delete, and there we go, it's gone. All right, so if I hit six, I get red, control, delete, it's gone. So for me, uh, this is a keeper, but I don't want to rate it a one because I'm not sure if I'm actually going to keep it. it. I mean, the composition's a little odd. I'm going to have to work on it. So let's keep going. Uh, I don't like that. So every time I don't like something, I hit X and then the right arrow key because I've turned off auto advance. Let's edit a shot very briefly because there's something I discovered or learned after mentioning in a video. So let's open up this shot here. And I don't think the shot's particularly stellar, but I'm gonna open it up in edit. I'm gonna very quickly crop it. I'm gonna crop it very quickly. And we'll get rid of my friend Paul. Uh, that's my regular photo walker there with the red jacket. And let's say I'm gonna edit this shot. And I want to uh, do some uh, masking. So I'm, I'm going to open up local and I want to mask uh, people. Mask people, paint that in, apply. Okay, so I've got the auto mask. It's just making them dark by default. And this toolbar hides by default. Now, I don't like that. And I complained about it in my UX changes video, but I since discovered that there is a menu setting that you can stop it from unhiding. All right, so you can disable auto hiding by going to view auto hide toolbar option, and now it will always stay here. So, you know, auto hiding the toolbar, I think if you're working on a smaller laptop or maybe a tablet or something, that's great. But if you're on a larger laptop or a desktop like me with an ultra wide monitor, auto hiding, there's no point in saving real estate. And uh, it just makes it easier to have it right here. So uh, if I go back to uh, grid mode and then I go into develop mode again and I go to brush, as soon as I hit the brush, this toolbar is here, I go to the crop, the toolbar is there, everything is always there. So if you've enjoyed this video, uh, please like and subscribe. Uh, thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video.